you. Mr. President, I'd ask that quorum call be vitiated. Without objection. And, Mr. President, I'd ask uh, consent to speak for up to 10 minutes as if in morning business. Without objection. Mr. President, I rise today to pay tribute to a longtime good friend and a great Georgian, Griffin Bell, who passed away on Monday of this week. Judge Griffin Bell was a native of America's Georgia. He was a distinguished lawyer in our state since 1947 when he passed the Georgia Bar after completing just four quarters of study at his beloved Mercer Law School in Macon, Georgia. Upon graduation the following year, he entered private practice in Savannah. Appointed by President John Kennedy to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, Attorney General of the United States under President Jimmy Carter, and as an attorney for President George H.W. Bush, Judge Bell has left an extraordinary legacy of courage, integrity, wisdom, and yes, humor to our nation and to my state. In one of the press reports this week upon Judge Bell's death at the age of 90, one of his law partners, Richard Snyder, at the distinguished Atlanta firm of King and Spaulding, where Judge Bell practiced before and after his service on the federal bench and as Attorney General said, and I quote, no novelist, not even Dickens or John Irving, could have created a more memorable character than Judge Bell. He took the role of being a lawyer and transformed it into a legend. It is remarkable that every man and woman who spent even a brief period with Judge Bell would cling to him and claim him as their hero forever. That's how legends are made, and legends last forever. And that will be the case with the great Griffin Bell." Close quote. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the article from the Newnan Times Herald in which Mr. Snyder's comment appeared be placed in the record. Without objection. Mr. President, in two short weeks, President-elect Obama will be inaugurated as our 44th President of the United States. I'm proud of this moment for him and for our nation, and the new President will have my prayers and my support. I believe it's appropriate to link in some small way the President-elect's great and historic victory to the courage and integrity of Judge Bell. In the 1950s and 60s, across the South and across our nation as a whole, the country worked to implement the landmark case of Brown v. Board of Education. While serving as Chief of Staff to Georgia Governor Ernest, Governor Ernest Vandiver, Judge Bell provided counsel to the Sibley Commission. This blue ribbon panel held hearings throughout Georgia for the purpose of educating citizens on the inevitability of public school desegregation. In my view, his efforts on this commission were an important step down the path that Dr. Martin Luther King and others traveled that enabled Atlanta to become the city and community that it is today, for Georgia to truly become the Empire State of the South, and for our nation to elect our new president. After co-chairing President Kennedy's successful Georgia campaign during his 1960 presidential election, the President nominated Judge Bell to a position on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. To quote from his excellent biography provided by King and Spaulding, and I quote, Judge Bell was unquestionably one of the Court's strongest civil rights enforcers. He fervently believed in the rule of law and had little patience for segregationist-minded government officials seeking to evade or defy court orders to deny African Americans their civil rights. In United States v. Barnett, Judge Bell voted with the majority of the court in ordering the University of Mississippi to admit James Meredith as a student and enjoin the governor from interfering with his admission. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the firm's biography of Judge Bell be placed in the record at this point. Without objection, so ordered. There were many more important decisions in which he was involved, and I was privileged to study and learn from them while attending law school at the University of Tennessee. Judge Bell was nominated by President Carter and confirmed by the Senate on January 25, 1977, as the nation's 72nd Attorney General. His force of character and common sense revived a Justice Department that suffered from the Watergate era. According to Terry Adamson, a law clerk for the judge when he was on the Fifth Circuit, a principal assistant for Judge Bell at the Justice Department, and a longtime friend of his said in an article that also appeared this week in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Bell recently told NPR reporter Nina Totenberg 
that his efforts to bring about transparency during his service at the department was the core of restoring public confidence, and certainly it was. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that Mr. Adamson's article appear in the record at this point. Ordered. When leaving the Fifth Circuit, Judge Bell returned to King and Spaulding and distinguished himself as one of the country's premier lawyers. In closing, as I have paid tribute to his distinguished career, I wish to take a moment to pay tribute to this wonderful gentleman and friend. As a lawyer, I learned so much from him about the practice of law. As a congressman and a senator, I learned so much about politics and public service. As a friend, I enjoyed our visits and conversations. His keen sense of humor has been compared to Mark Twain. As my good friend Bob Steed, Georgia's very own Mark Twain, a real humorist, columnist, and longtime law partner of Judge Bell said this week of his wisdom and wit, if he took a position, he'd take it strongly and defend it. But if someone improved it, he was willing to give way. His ego didn't get involved with his choices. He was sharp to the very end. He told his son that there must be a committee in heaven in charge of dying because it was taking so long. That was Judge Bell. Mr. President, Griffin Bell changed the course of history of our country. As a judge on the Fifth Circuit, his decisions regarding integration of school systems in Georgia and across the South was a model for integration throughout the nation. In his role as Attorney General, he did much to restore the public's trust in the Department of Justice. He was a close personal friend of mine, and this is not only a national loss, but a personal one as well. Mr. President, I have before me a commencement speech that he gave at Mercer University Law School in 2002, and I would at this time ask that unanimous consent that it be entered into the record. Without objection, so ordered. And I remember that day very well that, that Judge Bell gave that, re, uh, uh, that commencement speech at Mercer Law School because that day his grandson, Griffin III, graduated from Mercer Law School, and my son, uh, Bo graduated from Mercer that same day. And I was privileged not only to um, be there to uh, see my son graduate from law school, but also share the dice with Judge Bell and to introduce Judge Bell to make that commencement address. He was a great American. He was a great Georgian. He was a terrific lawyer uh, with unparalleled credentials, unparalleled integrity, and if someone's going to be missed by our state and by our country. And for that, I thank you, Mr. Uh, Madam President.